I love my off-grid cabin in the woods, but the one time a year that is, well, often quite challenging is summer. It can get pretty hot out here, and this past weekend we went up to the cabin to, well, enjoy my 60th birthday. So <laughs> if you ever wondered how old I am, well, there you have it. I'm 60. And the forecast for the cabin was that it would be like 89 to 91 degrees on each day that we were there. And actually on one day it got to 98 degrees. And I've got to tell you, that's the worst time to be at the cabin, especially now that I've removed a bunch of trees from around the cabin that used to shade it. So now you got a cabin in the woods. It's great. It's awesome to be there. And in the morning and in the evening, it's fine. It's wonderful. However, when the temperature gets up to 90 or above, it can be quite unpleasant. And so obviously, most people want to know, well, how could you install an air conditioning at your cabin? My off-grid cabin has just shy of 10 kilowatt hours of battery power. And 10 kilowatt hours is not a lot of power if you're trying to run an air conditioning unit that can use a thousand watts. I mean, 10 hours, you've drained your batteries, right? Well, not so fast. I also have just over 2,400 watts of solar. I've got over 1,800 watts of solar on the roof of the cabin, and I've got a smaller 615 watt array that I can rotate or tilt depending on where the sun is at different times a year. Now, if my battery bank is completely full by the time it starts to warm up, can I run an air conditioning unit? Well, let's find out. I've done a couple videos on running air conditioners off of both power stations and off-grid power and the kind of things that you have to consider. And one of them, of course, is startup power for that air conditioning unit. Air conditioning units can use some say four to 10 times, others maybe only say seven times, the rated power at startup. So if an air conditioner uses about a thousand watts, that startup when the compressor runs and, and the whole unit starts to fire up could take 7,000 watts of power. Although only briefly. So you've got to have the right inverter to run an air conditioning unit, one that can handle that peak power. Now I have a low frequency inverter that can peak at 12,000 watts. So I had no concerns with the inverter that I have. I knew that I could run an air conditioning unit at the cabin, the inverter would handle it, but I only had 10 kilowatts of battery power. So would that be enough, even with over 2,400 watts of solar? Well, let me tell you what I did and how well it worked out. After doing a bunch of videos and getting comments from my viewers, somebody brought up that they were using an 8,000 BTU window mounted style air conditioning unit and it seemed to run fine. And I thought maybe I should do that. So, okay. What did I do? I bought an LG 8000 BTU air conditioning unit. Now the first thing I have to tell you is it said that it needed 22 inches of an opening in order to install it in a window. And the only windows I have that are, would really work for me to install it are 24 inch windows. So that's one thing to consider. You may have a 24 inch window, but the opening isn't 24 inches. It's about 21 and a half inches. So I knew this would be pretty tight. So the first thing we did is we opened up the unit, we stuffed it in the window and went, yes, it'll work, but we can't use the little wings that they give you to fill in the gap. Because frankly, the unit was about an inch smaller than the gap that I had to install. That's the unit without the wings. But I decided, you know what, we can make that work. We just won't use the wings. We'll put some seal around it. We'll put a brace on the back, stuff it in there and see how it goes. So we did that, seal it up, close the window, put some blocking in the window so you can't open it from the outside. Um, you know, in case somebody decides they want that air conditioning unit more than you do. And away you go, plug it in the wall and, and boom, up she goes, you get some air conditioning. And that's what we did. We just stuffed it in a window, sealed up around the edges where we had the gaps and had, of course, a brace, mounted it all, done, the units in, and we kicked it on. Now, when I kicked it on, my batteries were pretty much full at that point. It was close to about noon and the temperature was rising. But one of the things I've always done in the summer at the cabin to try and make it bearable, because frankly, it gets hot, folks, is we cool the cabin down as much as possible overnight. All the windows open, fans running, drive the temperature of the cabin down as cold as we can get it, which in this case was 64 degrees. Now that's a really nice, comfortable temperature when it's hot outside. So that works pretty good. So we did that. And then what we used to always do is just button up all the windows, close all the curtains and try to reduce anything that generates heat, i.e. don't cook inside if you can get away with it. Don't constantly walk in and out. Don't leave the doors open, all that kind of stuff. And before I got an air conditioning unit, by the time the late afternoon rolled around, the inside temperature of the cabin was 80 degrees and almost unbearable. But if it was 90 outside, that was okay. 
80 is better than 90, right? Though you really can't do anything. You're, it's hot, it's sticky, it's uncomfortable. And so what you do is you sit around and wait till the outside temperature drops below 80, and then you open up all the windows and run fans and everything and try to cool the cabin down before you have to go to sleep. Frankly, it's quite miserable. So now we've installed an air conditioning unit and it's time to find out how well it works. We started with the unit on the energy saving mode and frankly, though that used a lot less power, it didn't really keep the cabin cooled down. Now, to be fair, an 8,000 BTU air conditioning unit is made for about 350 square feet or less. And my ground floor at the cabin is just under 300 square feet. And then it has the loft, which is also the same, essentially the same square footage. But I hoped that it would work because I didn't want to put in a bigger unit that used even more power. So since the economy mode didn't really work very well, the temperature continued to rise. It got up to 72 degrees. We put it on max cooling, set it at 69 degrees and let it run. Now, a couple things I noticed right away. One was that, well, my power worked fine. My 4,000 watt low frequency inverter had no problem running the air conditioning and it usually seemed to be running at about 1,000 watts. Sometimes it would drop down to about 800. Now the next thing that I noticed was, of course, my batteries began to drop. Not that quickly, but they certainly began to drop. If I've got 10 kilowatts of power and every hour I'm using one kilowatt, well, I've got 10 hours of runtime before those batteries are completely dead but not so fast. Because I have over 2,400 watts of solar and one of my solar arrays, I can track the sun. I don't have a tracker, but I can move it by hand. As long as I move that array about every 45 minutes in order to track the sun, I noticed that my batteries didn't really drain that much. And by that evening, with the cabin at a still fairly comfortable temperature, about 74 degrees, 75 degrees, my batteries actually were sitting at about 65%. With LiPo 4s, that's not bad at all. Though I was wondering how they would do overnight since now I had no solar anymore, the sun's gone down, how's it gonna do? Well, we shut the AC unit off, opened up the windows, ran the fans, and in the morning we got up was still just over 60% on the batteries. Barely used anything overnight running the refrigerator and the, the fans that I have running. I've got some 12 volt fans running. Next morning, that would be Saturday morning, we went ahead, cooled the cabin down as much as we could. We probably got it down around 65 degrees, closed everything up. And this time we put the air conditioning unit on max cooling mode and just let it run all day. Now again, it drew the battery bank down to about 65% by the evening, but this time the cabin stayed even cooler at about 72 to 73 degrees. That made all the difference. The only challenge we had was that the loft area of the cabin actually was pretty hot at about 75 to 80 degrees, and it was tough cooling it down at night. If I could have run the AC unit all night long, for example, maybe we could have cooled things down a little bit better, but it wasn't quite that comfortable. So on the final day, what we did then, we cooled the cabin down again in the morning, ran the AC unit all day long, and we had a little bit of clouds, so we were losing production, but we still managed to run the AC unit all day long and everything else in the cabin and only dropped the power down to about 65%. But this time, we put a fan that we have in one of the windows upstairs to exhaust all the heat that we could outside and opened up the windows in the lower section of the cabin so that it would have to draw air from the cooler area below out through the loft and that actually cooled the cabin down and got it fairly comfortable all night long. I was able to run an 8,000 BTU window style air conditioning unit for several hours during the day I think we ran it between 10 and 12 hours. And as long as I had my solar panels tracking the sun and I was getting good solar production, I only used about 35% of my 10 kilowatts of battery bank reserve over that period of time. And we made it through the night, no problem with the battery sitting at about 26.2 volts. That's still above 60%. In the end, you can easily do this. There's a couple other things that we did that I thought I would tell you about. One, I got a mister that only used about two gallons of water per hour, and I set that up on the deck 
so that while we were sitting outside during the day and visiting or hanging out or whatever, we had plenty of mist generating around the, the deck area, which really helped keep things much more bearable than they would be if you didn't have that. We also have a couple sunshades that we drop down so that the sun's not beating down on the deck while we're sitting out there. That made things really, really comfortable. So if you're looking at running an air conditioning unit at an off-grid cabin, I would highly recommend getting a low-frequency inverter, having plenty of reserve power in your battery bank, having a generator, which I did run for about an hour on Sunday, but it was so hot out, I didn't like the fact that the generator was smelling hot, so I did turn it off. We really though probably didn't need to run it. And having enough solar to keep up is one thing, but having some panels that you can move or maybe bifacial panels that can collect sun from both sides would be a really good option. All in all, it's absolutely doable. Frankly, I'm excited to go back to the cabin now in these hot summer months, knowing that I can keep the cabin cool and have a place to get away from the sun after working all day at the cabin. So I hope that helps somebody out. If you're looking to put air conditioning in your cabin or you're already doing it, do me a favor, drop a comment down below. Let me know, how's it working out for you? I'd like to also thank all of my members for supporting the channel. I really do appreciate it. It keeps me motivated, so thank you very much for that. Meanwhile, folks, I'm gonna drop another video right here for you to check out. Thanks for watching. Y'all have a great day. The old jar hit out.